Well, hello, everybody. Uh, my name is Jesse Rose. I'm the head of product for the infatuation uh, and Zagat. Uh, we acquired it. Uh, I'll get into that. Uh, cool. So uh, while I'm sure hopefully some of you have heard of us, uh, my assumption is a lot of people haven't. And so I've got a quick reel. I'll go into a couple slides. And then ultimately, I'm going to talk about one of our products, uh, which is called Tax Tracks. Infatuation is unbelievable. I only use infatuation. There isn't a brand that I love and like affiliate myself with more. Like I really love infatuation and everything they do. I mean, it's pretty much my religion at this yeah. point. The infatuation is fucking dope. life according to your list. Snow is still coming down three inches per hour. That's white out conditions, folks. I'm outside right now to help show you places that you can eat during this crazy weather. Tex Rex, it's like the date night magic. I love Tex Rex, I use it all the time. I don't know what I want. I can just text them and they give me exactly what I'm looking for. It's like texting your friend who actually knows everything about food. Whenever I'm in another city, I actually always lean on the infatuation. I was in LA recently looking at the app and that was sort of my travel guide. Anytime I'm looking for a suggestion on a new restaurant, infatuation. The actual community around the brand is really what makes it so unique. I would say the infatuation is organic as opposed to like interactions or reviews that are like paid or sponsored. It's just real. It's tangible. It's something I can really see and feel. You know, Zagat has been around for 40 years and it's still a household name. We really want to create two brands that can live side by side. We're going to create a platform that's more community driven reviews than the, the infatuation, which is really editorially so driven. More so of a Yelp? I wouldn't call it Yelp, but we're going to go after Yelp with it. Cool. So the infatuation. Uh, we write restaurant reviews and guides. Uh, and we like to talk about how we fill the gap between an established food media like Bon Appetit, New York Times, Michelin Guide, uh, and UGC. So Yelp, uh, TripAdvisor, Foursquare. But we really focus on being conversational and situational. So we never take ourselves too seriously. And we like to talk about how we're at the intersection of this utility and entertainment. And so these are some examples of our uh, guides that we've done. So where to eat with a third tier friend, uh, where to eat in your gym clothes, date spots you aren't totally sure. Uh, and so again, very conversational, situational. Uh, it's like you're talking to your funny friend. Uh, we've got coverage in 36 cities across the globe. We've got 75 full-time people. We don't accept any free meals. Uh, no invites, it's always anonymous. And we have website, native apps, email, uh, and a product, Textrex, that I'm going to talk about in a minute. And ultimately, it comes down to our users trust us. Uh, in March 2018, we did acquire Zagat from Google. I'm sure you've seen the stickers on restaurant windows, maybe come across the book. It's been called the Burgundy Bible, it's a little pocket sized book. Uh, we've got big plans to relaunch the brand to a new audience, and it really it's going to be our take on a restaurant-only, user-generated content site um, to try and solve a lot of the problems that we're solving with the infatuation, just on a different scale. So let's rewind a little bit. Uh, it's the year's 2015. Uh, Jon Snow's dead. Uh, Obama is still in office, and people are arguing about the color of a dress. Magic launches. It's an on-demand personal assistant. And so instead of launching an app, they created uh, a phone number that you could just text and interact with. And so this was one of the first examples of what was called the invisible app era. It was heralded as the next big thing. And Many, many people jumped on the bandwagon, us included. Uh, in March 2015, we launched Textrex. It was a phone number that you could text for restaurant recommendations. We made the decision to make it 100% human powered, uh, which is very different from a lot of people. Uh, fast forward to 2019, uh, ultimately, people were wrong. Uh, most bots failed. 
Uh, it proved clear that a lot of people were jumping on a technology fad, not really being intentional about the why. Um, but not us. Uh, TextRex has persisted. It's been a challenge, but we've been able to find ways to build it into our business and make our organization stronger. And so with it being a text-based uh, application, we really had to focus on the interface, uh, or sorry, the interactions and not the interface. Um, and so we've learned a lot along the way, and so I've bubbled up five important insights that we've learned but can really be used for any product. So number one, focus on creating value for the user. A lot of these might be self-explanatory, but anyways. Uh, so TextRex was born out of a problem. When your job is to know what the best restaurants are, uh, you're the first person that people go to when they need a restaurant recommendation. And so after a especially text-heavy weekend, our founder had an idea. Let's create a phone number that people can text for restaurant recs. We already had the knowledge with the infatuation, and so ultimately we knew that the need was clearly there. Being a small startup, we needed to be smart about our resources. We didn't have a ton of venture backing. We couldn't really launch some really fully baked idea, and so we chose the path to least resistance. And this is like my favorite MVP story, although I might be biased. Uh, we went out and we bought an iPhone. That was it. We connected it to one iCloud account on multiple computers in the office, and a bunch of people responded to texts. Uh, and it worked. Uh, it was very hacky, and there was one long weekend where Verizon blocked a couple thousand text messages thinking that the phone number was spam, then let them through all at once. Uh, and so that was a bit of a wake-up call. It was time to like, figure out a new solution. But ultimately, we would proved that there was a need. Uh, and it really worked because we, had, uh, we understood that the behavior already existed, but by focusing on the problem, not the solution. And so bots, blockchain, voice, these have all been big fads that have been heralded as the next big thing. But most have focused on the technology, have failed. And so if uh, it's all those that have uh, provided inherent value for their user and really let the technology fit into place that have persisted and stayed around. Number two, uh, don't get ahead of yourself. Scaling can wait. So too many good ideas are thrown out because they can't, well, or they can't scale well from the start. By experimenting early with a big investment, uh, without a big investment, we were able to validate that there was a need. Magic, Poncho, Operator, these were all bots that existed, uh, but they all failed. And so because the technology wasn't mature enough to create a fully automated experience that felt like a human interaction, uh, it, they didn't work out. And so the impetus to create a scalable solution up front led all of their creators to index on their own problems uh, that users didn't end up caring about. So they were solving their own problems and not their users. For Rex, we've always taken a very practical approach to scale. Uh, and that was only after we proved that there was a need. As the user base grew, we began to find ways to scale up the process. So initially, on that phone, we were just handing it around in the weekends. Uh, we ended up hiring a team of contractors to offload the burden from our full-time staff. We transitioned from a phone to an actual product. Uh, but we did still make the decision to keep it 100% human-powered, which it is to this day. Uh, insight number three. People want to create a personal connection. So we've worked really hard with the infatuation to create a relatable and reliable brand. Um, one intentional decision from the start was to write in a very conversational manner. For Rex, we leaned into this. We crafted a persona. It was Rex the androgynous dinosaur. Um, and so in order to keep consistency across a whole lot of people that were answering Rex, uh, we created rules. We answered in we instead of I. We uh, always sent in the same format. We expressed the infatuation's opinion as our own. And so by creating this singular personality, we built trust and connection with our users. And so instead of talking to Jesse from the infatuation, you're always just talking to Rex. And so the strategy ended up paying off. Uh, to say people were comfortable was an understatement. 
Uh, to date, people have mentioned dates, breakups, proposals, marriages, affairs, even once tried to use us as their spirit guide on a mushroom trip. Uh, and so people really engaged in ways that they would never with a bot, with an automated experience. You know, some of these are hilarious. Uh, one of my favorites as of late is this one on the right. Uh, there was a whole conversation, but about to break up with my boyfriend tonight. He cheated on me with my younger sister, but he doesn't know I know. He's paying. Need a good spot to run up his tab and then enough people around to make a scene when I storm out. Probs after dessert. <laughs> there are photos involved. It's, it's all very entertaining. Um, and so while a lot of this has been TMI, uh, surprisingly, it's rarely abused. So people really treat us like a confidant, which is insane. It's crazy. And so while it's fun and entertaining, when we can zoom out, we can actually see some really interesting insights about people's behavior. Um, so with dining becoming so enmeshed in people's social lives, it's become a great trend indicator. So a really fun example is that uh, we looked at uh, mentions of phrases uh, over the past year, and in February, the phrase breakup skyrocketed 500%. So clearly, Valentine's Day is a very uh, polarizing event. Um, another one that hits home for me is in the last six months, there's been a 100% increase in natural wine mentions. So, uh, so yeah, we can see some really interesting stuff when we zoom out to this macro level. Number four, let your, users let your users tell you what they want. So Rex has given us a channel to listen to our users, and we're much better for it. The more conversations we're having, the better we're able to notice trends. And they're influenced by time of year, weather, sports, cultural events. Um, and this really allowed us to create a feedback loop for the infatuation. So Rex's initial knowledge base was built off of the infatuation's content. We'd then look at Rex conversations, funnel insights to the editorial team, and they'd write content based off of it. Then uh, our responders would use the content, but it would also signify uh, success for that content across all of our different products. So by leveraging Rex, our edit team was actually able to use data to be much more in tune with our users. So again, some of these are real, or these are all real examples of conversations and then pieces of content that we've created based off of trends that we've seen behind it. So where to break up with someone if you can't really do it at your apartment? Where to go when you're not sure if it's a date? 24 NYC restaurants with big round tables. Uh, round tables are oddly popular. It's something that comes up all the time. But you kind of always want a round table when you're eating in a group, so it kind of makes sense. Um, and our final insight uh, for me of the night, every interaction is an opportunity to build trust. So investing early in creating a relationship with your users pays dividends in the long run in the form of trust and loyalty. So we've been very intentional about every touch point that we have with our users, whether it's text, email, our site. Uh, on the infatuation, we're always very intentional about the perspective and personality that we inject. And so this direct channel has given us uh, a new plane to engage in conversation. It's reframed our relationship from one to many to one to one. And it really has created a much deeper relationship. And it's really worked. Uh, we get a ton of anecdotal feedback about how much they love the brand, how much they love the product. But where it's really more impactful is how this relationship translates into engagement across our brand. So our Rex users have become our most active users. They use all of our products. They attend our events. But ultimately, it's helped our bottom line, and it's helped us bring in more revenue to the brand, which has made this whole thing a big success. So that's it. Those are the five insights. So TextRex has solved a problem for our users, but it's also helped us build a much stronger business in the process. Um, so these insights, uh, while they were built out of a uh, invisible app, a texting product. Ultimately, you can use these for any product that you're working on. Uh, so 
That's our phone number. Uh, feel free to text us if you, next time you need a restaurant recommendation or a spirit guide. Uh, just be kind. It's real people behind the scenes. Uh, you can try it right now if you want, although it might be a lot of people. Uh, we're also hiring. Uh, there are a bunch of design and product roles that aren't up yet, but they will be soon. Thank you. Do we need to put um, standard messaging rates will apply down there? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, definitely. All right, well, I guess this is the, my, my, the, the theme of the night, but uh, give me your favorite highbrow restaurant recommendation and your favorite lowbrow, or one of those if you can only think of one. Uh, well, so I, I think my, my favorite, my like, uh, my death row meal, I love, I love uh, pizza. And so Ruby Rosa is my favorite pizza in New York City. Uh, so that's probably one of them. Four Charles Prime Rib is amazing, and that's like probably like highbrow. Uh, yeah. OK, it's pretty good. Motorino is better. Anyway, first question. Yeah. Um, I have used this, and it is truly an amazing thing. Minimal design. Um, Thank you. Just, it really is in a league of its own. I have just two thoughts. How do you train the people because it, there is an inconsistency between some people really know their stuff and some you can tell are kind of searching harder and giving answers that, that aren't quite as spot on as, as the others? And we'll, we'll do that in a second. Oh, cool. So, so yeah, so because it's contractor-based, uh, we train all of the contractors that come on. We test them for their knowledge. Ultimately, because it's human-powered, we can't ensure consistency across, but we're regularly QAing to make sure that all of the conversations are right. And so the idea, uh, while it's human powered now, is that it won't be forever. Uh, so as we, it's kind of like there's a little bit of automation behind the scenes right now. And so as the systems get better, as we build our conversational data knowledge base, we'll be able to automate it more. Um, and we will bring that consistency in there. but. The idea is that you, you should at least be having a fairly consistent yeah. experience. So the, the one thing I would suggest is a feedback loop, because no one's ever cut back to me and said, well, you know, how is Ruby Foods? You know, so you, yeah. um, that would be really helpful. Definitely something we've thought of and will be doing. Hi. Um, so you said that you are mostly per people power right now, but like um, for the restaurant recommendations and like um, after the conversation's over, how much do you integrate like either machine learning or other tech or um, how do you also know that somebody went there and they enjoyed it? Like where do you get that data and how do you integrate it with the invisible app? So today uh, we are, uh, we don't get a lot of that data. Uh, unfortunately, uh, we'd like to build into our app. We, you know, user count. We can recommend a place. We'll see you went there in the app. We'll mark it in the back end. Uh, or similarly, we'll build some sort of follow-up mechanism where we can ask at least and understand how it was. Today, that doesn't exist, but that's definitely in the future. Um, and uh, we've kind of moved in stages in terms of like our processing afterwards. So we have people that were, it used to be, we're just reading every conversation that happened, and that's how insights were generated. They'd mark a lot of things that were coming up, but then ultimately we've now moved to a couple layers on top of that where that's still somewhat happening, but we've also got uh, some higher level kind of like ability to jump into the data and uh, kind of start searching. We use a tool called Metabase, which, which allows us to kind of like jump in and start to see uh, the different tables. Back here. Hey, um, really love the app, and I really like the conversational tone the most. But my question for you is, down the line, do you guys plan on integrating with any third-party reservation makers so that when I'm like, oh, I want to eat at this restaurant, and then boom, I can book my table? Yeah, so today we do have an integration with OpenTable. Uh, we've talked about integrating with a lot of the others. Uh, it's in the works and, you know, hopefully. I'd, I'd love, I think the hard part is that, especially in cities like New York, where some of the best restaurants that we're leave, making reviews for don't have available reservations. And so we have to find some kind of like middle ground for that. But ultimately, I would love an ability to go on and see 
all of the reservations that are available from infatuation restaurants. At least that's what I would love. We got one more back over here. Hi, can you go into more details about the internal process of how you aggregate every single information into actual insights? Yeah, so, so a lot of it is, uh, so it started as manual. So again, people were reading every conversation and tracking. Essentially, we've got people, uh, the three cities that Rex is live in is New York, LA, and San Francisco. So we had people going through, reading all the conversations, bubbling up, essentially high level words that they saw, neighborhoods, uh, cuisines, any sort of, uh, we call them perfect fours. That's our, our kind of like category tag. And so perfect four, you know, going out to eat with the parents or something like that. And so we would bubble up a lot of this stuff. And so essentially people would become like the knowledge base owner of that and our editorial team would leverage them. Uh, but today we're using that tool Metabase to essentially look at, uh, call it word clouds of what's going on. Uh, there are ways to look at volume of different phrases and words across different days or weeks. So it's still not close to as automated as would be, uh, you know, transformational for the business uh, at the kind of like scaled way we're finding a way to do it and making it work for. Actually, let's do uh, one more quick one. How do you make money? Good question. Uh, so the infatuation uh, makes money by working with consumer brands. So Amex is one of our biggest clients, Anheuser-Busch, Samsung, Don Julio. Uh, and so we throw events. That's a big part of our business. Maybe 70% of our revenue comes from uh, in the real, uh, there was a large scale event that's called EatsCon that is in LA is our third annual food festival uh, that's happening this weekend. There is uh, our second in New York will be happening in October out at Forest Hills. It's a really big food festival as you can imagine. Um, kind of call it a food festival for music festival people. Um, and so beyond that, we then do big deals where there's sponsored content. Uh, so Amex will sponsor a, our biggest pieces of content on the site. We never do advertorial. We never get paid by restaurants or companies. So there's a real separation of church and state. But uh, we will take money from Pete's Coffee to do a big Instagram campaign because ultimately one half of the business is a fairly large media organization essentially and we use that to power text uh, any of our other products as well as all the work we're doing on Zagat for the next thing. Amazing. Well, wonderful close of the evening. And one thing I'd like to add is I texted to ask where I should take Jesse Rose on a date. And the answers were Lartuzzi and Malatesta. Hey, so, there you go. Great options. <laughs> Thank you so much. This is terrific. Thanks.